Hi, I'm Gina Barrett, and in this video, I'm going to start a series showing you how to use our Stumpwork tool set. We're going to work on some mushrooms, and in today's video, we're going to do the mushroom caps. We'll ultimately be putting together a picture with all of the elements, similar but not the same to this. So, let's get started. For this project, you'll need some plain fabric. A medium weight muslin is fine, but you can use any other even weave cotton. You'll need a piece that you can fold down a few times. You'll need your drawing. This drawing is just a very simple, loose, mushroom head shaped piece. You'll need our stump work tools. And basically you decide which tools you want to use and then draw a shape so that they will at least fit into it. The different profiles will determine the sort of how much open space you have on the shape. It's a very loose thing. You haven't got to worry too hard. You'll also want some sewing thread for tacking your pad and for working the couching stitches. So something smooth that works well. And to do the actual embroidery, you want a pearl cotton. I'm using a size eight for this project. Last but not least, you'll also want some scissors, a tapestry needle, a sharp needle, and some clear tape. I'll use packing tape, but you can use any other clear tape. First, you'll need to make a lace pad. Use a piece of muslin or cotton and fold it a few times. The size of the pad should be a little larger than the pieces that you'll stitch and your pattern that you've drawn out on paper. Tack the layers together along the edge, knotting the tacking thread at the back. Now place your drawing on the pad and then cover it with clear tape. I like to poke holes along the line. You don't have to, but for me, it makes it easier. Keep your holes close together. It will result in a neater finish. Now you need to lay the coordinate. This is the outline of the piece. Use a doubled thread. I'm using a number eight pearl. And then couch this to your pad using a finer thread. I'm using a 12 weight. You can use an even finer sewing thread if you wish. Double over the thread and then attach the loop. Come up through a hole with your couching thread, go around the loop and back down in the same hole. Then come up at the next hole and couch around the doubled thread, always going back down through the same hole.
Keep your couching stitches close. You'll get a neater finish if they're close together. As you reach the beginning, take one of those double threads, thread a tapestry needle, and work through the loop and then back, going under any of the previous couching stitches that you've just placed. The other end, again thread through, will go forward under the couching stitches. Then add more couching stitches to secure everything nicely. and you can trim these outline threads. Fasten your couching thread at the back. Using a new length of thread, decide where you're going to start. Are you going to start at the top? Are you going to start at the bottom? It's up to you. Thread the thread onto a tapestry needle and again go through some of the couching stitches alongside the coordinat. You basically just want to get this secured alongside like that, no knots. and then begin your detached blanket stitches. These are also called detached buttonhole, single Brussels stitch, and in passementerie, it's called grappe or netting.
you'll work in lines and at the end of each row, wrap the thread around the coordinate twice. This covers those threads. It will secure it nicely and gives a firm edge. Continue to work back and forth to fill, increasing or decreasing as your shape requires. You can work with your needle pointing down or turn the work and have your needle pointing up. It is entirely up to you and whatever is most comfortable. When you have filled the whole of the space, you'll need to start on the second layer. For the mushroom, you'll need to start this at the top of the shape. Work a few rows, just as before, back and forth. Try to take care not to catch the first layer underneath. Um, you will probably find that difficult. It won't matter too, too much, particularly at the edges for this particular project. After you've worked a few rows, then you need to place the tool. Choose the one that works best for the shape and then place it in, tucking the tip of the tool underneath those few rows. Stitch the tool into place, both through the holes and at the handle if you wish. You can, for smaller pieces, just hold it in place. Now you'll continue to work the second layer back and forth in exactly the same way as you did the first layer. Remember to secure nicely through the coordinate at the side twice on each row. To add a new length of thread at any point, secure the working thread with a knot if you wish, and then pass it underneath the couching threads alongside the coordinate over an unworked area. Add your new thread again through an unworked area leading back up to where you left off and carry on with your rows as required. By attaching at the unworked area, you will then, as you work it, cover up those loose threads and hold them into place.
When the second layer is complete, work a closely spaced, so right next to each other, a blanket stitch along the edge. This will strengthen it and help to secure all those stitches. Turn the pad over and snip the holding stitches that are securing the tool. You can then remove the tool. Now you can work the same closely spaced blanket stitch along the edge of the first layer. To finish the piece, work a small knot and then take your thread through the closely spaced blanket stitches, preferably on what will be the bottom layer, and just weave that right through before trimming it. Work all of the shapes on your pad before you remove any of them. To remove the pieces, turn the pad over and cut all of the stitches at the back, remembering as well to remove any of those knots that are at the back. Then gently separate the layer and you'll see the stitches, the couching stitches, and you can snip them along there as well. This all means that you won't catch your uh, work piece at all while you've got your scissors out. When all of those pieces have been snipped and the piece, the pad fabric unfolds, you can then just gently lift your worked pieces away from the pad and remove any of those stray threads. And there you have it. You've now completed some needle lace. Um, we're going to use it to create a stump work 3D embroidery picture in the next series of videos. But you know, you can use it as lace, you could use it as a bubble hat for a little elf. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Do please hit subscribe, click like. Um, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when I upload the next videos, including the next video in this series. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.